You may be seated. Welcome to Washburn University and the 117th graduation ceremony of the Washburn University School of Law. I'm Jeffrey Jackson, Dean of the Law School, and I would like to introduce the members of the platform party. I ask that you stand as I call your name and remain standing. Beginning to my immediate right, the platform party are Emily Grant, Professor and Associate Dean for Academic Affairs of the Law School. Jalen Lowry, Law School alumna and Associate Dean for Student Affairs of the Law School. John Dietrich, Law School alumnus, Vice Chair of the Washburn University Board of Regents. John Nave, Washburn University alumnus and Board of Regents member. Angel Romero, Law School alumnus and Board of Regents member. Terry Beck, Law School alumnus, Board of Regents member. Shelley Bueller, Chair of Washburn University Board of Regents. Marla Lukert, Law School alumna, Chief Justice, Honorary Degree recipient, and our speaker this evening. Dr. Laura Stevenson, Interim Provost, Vice President for Academic Affairs of Washburn University and Dr. Julianne Mazacek, President of Washburn University. The platform party may be seated. We also have with us tonight as a special guest, former President Jerry Farley. This is my first time up here tonight as Dean of the Law School, and it's apparently always dangerous to go off script, but I'm going to, because I wanted to take this opportunity to say a few words about this particular graduating class. This class is special. Not since the 1969 graduating class that came to Washburn in the lake of, wake of a tornado and spent three years going to law school in trailers has there been a class that has faced the same level of adversity as the one here? These graduates before you came to Washburn in the middle of a global pandemic. They began their law school career entirely on Zoom, and many didn't get to return to the classroom until their second year. And for those who were able to return in person, they did so in a world of masks and social distancing, with classes on Zoom, or held in university ballrooms, and even in the dance studio over there. And they endured professors with wildly different technological capabilities and understandings, <laughs> who were still trying to adjust to a hybrid teaching environment. But they came anyway. They persevered anyway. I've also been told it's probably a bad idea for a dean to have a favorite graduating class, and that's probably true. However, I think it's okay for me to express some admiration, and make no mistake, students, I admire you. You have faced unprecedented challenges, and you have, and you have triumphed over those challenges. I'm privileged to have known you. Thank you for coming here and thank you for all that you've done. And so it is my honor to begin the proceedings. I would now like to welcome the Associate Dean for Student Affairs, Jalen Lowry, to the podium. It is my honor to introduce the graduate that the class of 2023 elected as their Washburn Student Bar Association president. President Adriana Berry Dunn began her presidency during a very difficult year. With students very tired of all the upheavals COVID had wrought during their time as students. President Berry Dunn was determined 
to rejuvenate the spirit of the student body and started by bringing back the tradition of welcoming incoming 1Ls with a big WSBA event, a field day on the, last, on, the first day of, on the last day of orientation that set the tone for the entire year. Fun was back in legal education, as far as it ever can be. <laughs> President Barry Dunn continued to emphasize fun and wellness breaks to bring the student body together with WSBA helping to sponsor student organization evening events, as well as the Halloween trunk or treat that she had started the year before and which has become an anticipated event citywide. These events through the school year bolstered the big events like Bar Review and the Barrister's Ball and made the school a vibrant place. President Barry Dunn, on behalf of the class of 2023, I would like to present to you a crystal gavel given in gratitude for your enthusiasm, hard work, and dedication to the student body. Thank you, Dean Lowry. Good evening, family, friends, faculty, and staff. First, I want to say thank you all for coming. I don't know about you guys, but I am so glad today is finally here. <laughs> I want to thank our family and friends for listening to us complain about school or even listen to hypos. You probably really didn't understand, but you just nodded along and said, okay, <laughs> as we explained the concept to you. I want to thank our professors and staff for all the help you gave us along the way. It was really appreciated. Now to my classmates, we did it. <laughs> Aristotle once said, the law is reason free from passion. No offense to Aristotle, but during my three years at Washburn Law, I have come to find passion is a key ingredient to the study of law and of life. It's with passion, courage of conviction, and strong sense of self that we take our next steps into the world. Remembering that first impressions are not always correct, you must always have faith in people, and most importantly, you must always have faith in yourself. Now, <laughs> well, I wish I could take credit for that. Um, we were told in LERW that we must always cite our source. I will not be blue book citing this, but L. Woods, Legally Blonde, graduation speech. <laughs> I will say that while I love the movie, Elle Woods did lie to us about what to expect from law school. Did we get cold called? Yes. But were we in the library every day, all day? No. Okay, okay, we can kind of blame that on COVID. <laughs> Fun fact, we are the first class at Washburn to do basically all three years virtually. I want to say I am so proud of us. We did the impossible, made connections in a virtual format. I remember talking to some attorneys as a 1L and them saying, I don't know how y'all are doing that because law school is about networking and making connections and you just not doing it over Zoom. But we persisted and made those connections. We reached out to people and showed them that COVID was not gonna stop us. We even made friends over Zoom, which honestly, who would have thought? <laughs> While COVID definitely shaped us, it helped us learn to adapt. We got through so much together. From family members dying, professors retiring, which in recent weeks has been a lot, um, and even the daily question of, can I drop out yet? We started off as bright-eyed baby students to bright-eyed law graduates, ready to tackle the bar and make the leap into becoming attorneys. Continue to break barriers and change the world as we know it. Congratulations, class of 2023. We did it.
Every year, the graduating class gets to vote on the William O. Douglas Professor of the Year, Adjunct of the Year, and Staff Member of the Year Award. This award is an opportunity to recognize outstanding members of our Washburn Law family and all that they do for us. On behalf of the class of 2023, it is my honor to present this year's 2022-2023 award recipients. For the 2022-2023 Professor of the Year is Professor Klinkner. Professor Klinkner joined the faculty of Washburn University School of Law in 2019 and was extremely helpful to students prior to starting a tenure track position in the fall 2022 at the University of North Dakota School of Law. While at Washburn, Professor Klinkner taught evidence and law practice management as well as serving as Assistant Director of Academic Enrichment and Bar Readiness. Professor Klinkner. The 2022-2023 Adjunct Professor of the Year is Professor Slinkard. Professor Slinkard, Washburn Law 03, is a United States Attorney for the District of Kansas. Serving by virtue of the Vacancies Reform Act since March 1, 2021, Professor Slinkard has served in the United States Attorney's Office for approximately 12 years, serving as a Special Assistant and Assistant United States Attorney, Topeka Criminal Supervisor, District Criminal Chief, and since 2018 as first assistant United States attorney. Professor Slinkard has served as an adjunct professor at the Washburn University School of Law since 2004, where he teaches pretrial at CIV. I don't know where he is. The 2022-2023 Staff Member of the Year is Ms. Donna Haverkamp. Ms. Haverkamp joined the staff at Washburn Law in 1985 and serves the law school as a student's records administrator. Her job title includes preparing registration materials, assisting students with enrollment, performing degree audits for students, administering exam accommodations, processing grades for transcripts, calculating class ranks and honors, certifying graduates to various state bars, keeping track of bar passes results, printing unofficial transcripts, and maintaining student files for all current and former students. Ms. Haverkamp will sadly be leaving Washburn Law at the end of the year, and selfishly, we are her last class, so I'm kind of glad about that. <laughs> Ms. Haverkamp. I'll be turning things back over to Dean Jackson. <laughs> Thank you, President Barry Dunn. I will now call upon Regent Bueller to help me honor our golden grad.
Now is the time when we recognize our golden graduates. Washburn Law honors alumni celebrating a 70, 60, or 50 year graduation milestone. Members of the classes of 1953, 1963, and 1973 participate in the commencement ceremony wearing a special graduation gown and walking with the 2023 graduating class. They are presented with a medallion to commemorate this milestone. Today, six of them from the class of 1973 have joined us. The first is William Griffin, who's not here. <laughs> then David Heineman. The Honorable Stephen Hornbaker. James E. Martin. James N. Reardon. And Professor Ronald E. Wirtz. Thank you. Please join me in giving all of our golden grads a round of applause. Washburn Law is proud to count Marla Lukert among its distinguished alumni. She serves as a model for what we hope our graduates strive for in their careers. Not only is she an accomplished legal professional with a slew of impressive career achievements, but she has also been known for her spirit of positivity and respectfulness in the way that she relates to other people. This has been true from her time here at Washburn Law all the way to her current role as Chief Justice of the Kansas Supreme Court. Now we are able to appreciate just how much she's brought to the development of law and justice in Kansas, as well as to the legal profession itself. Your program lists her career highlights, including her 30 plus years behind the bench as a judge in justice. But what it doesn't quite encapsulate is the esteem held toward her by her former professors and students, attorneys, court staff, and the community at large, all of which she has richly earned. Alongside of all her professional accomplishments, she has taken the time to remain close to the school and to its students, acting as a mentor to future and newly minted lawyers hoping to navigate a tight-knit legal community. She has spearheaded initiatives to ensure and expand justice and access to justice for all Kansans. She has authored and contributed to numerous legal opinions that display the kind of careful and forward-looking approach to the law that we strive for our students to emulate. And she quickly became and still remains a strong voice of leadership for both Washburn Law and the broader Kansas legal profession. While Washburn Law certainly can't take credit for all of these qualities that Chief Justice Lukert has displayed throughout her career, although we'd certainly like to, and I'm going to try, um, we are honored to be associated with her. It's always to have a pleasure to have her present at law school events. We consider ourselves lucky to have her, as well as her husband, children, and grandchildren as part of our Washburn Law extended family. So I have the opportunity now to welcome to the podium today's speaker and recipient of the honorary degree, Doctor of Law degree, the Honorable Marla J. Lukert. Sorry, it's taking me a minute to collect myself after that very generous and kind introduction. 
Thank you, Dean Jackson, for that. President Mazicek, Regents, Deans, President Emeritus Farley, and the entire Washburn community, I am honored to be invited to speak today to Washburn Law School's graduating class of 2023. Yay! <laughs> and to receive an honorary degree. I'm really overwhelmed, as you might be able to tell, or those who know me may, may be able to see this, uh, to be recognized by this university that gave me so much. An outstanding education, leadership opportunities, an environment in which I could succeed and support throughout my career. Thank you again for this honor. So graduates, family, friends, golden graduates, and honored guests, celebrating this day with all of you deepens that honor. What a joyous day. Today is a dream come true for each graduate in the class of 2023 and for all who shared that dream with them. Graduates, look around. Look at the smiles and the happy tears that reflect pride and joy. Take a mental picture because this is a day you will remember as one of the special moments in your life that will, you will recall decades later. Your family, friends, professors, law school staff, and many others feel happiness today for you. And they likely feel delight knowing that they helped you along the way. I don't know about your law school experience, but I know my circle of friends, family, and mentors supported me in countless ways on my journey. Celebrating my graduation with them allowed me to say, Thank you. I'd like to borrow a tradition from the Kansas Supreme Court's bar admission ceremonies. We pause to collectively show your and our gratitude to those who supported you. Graduates, I invite you, if you can, to stand and applaud those in the audience and those who may not be able to be here today who supported you in achieving your dream. Thank you, graduates. I can see that you just added to their joy. While we're showing our appreciation, I wish all the mothers on the platform and in the audience an early happy birth Mother's Day. <laughs> graduates, from my experience of watching my children accomplish their goals of getting a law degree and other graduate degrees, you've given your mothers a beautiful gift. Even, even so, I advise you don't forget Mother's Day tomorrow. <laughs> and to all you fathers, I suspect you will still be feeling the glow of pride on Father's Day. Graduates, without a doubt, your accomplishments justify the joy and pride that fills this arena. You have completed a rigor rigorous curriculum that demanded much of you. Countless hours of study, lost sleep, Grit, determination, resilience, persistence, and has been said many times today, perseverance. Getting to law school graduation is never an easy task. Yet you had to deal with the unusually trying times as you navigated a pandemic. Take pride in what you accomplished. Feel even prouder because you did it against the backdrop of of that un unique experience. All of us are proud of you. I'm guessing you've perceived that I've moved through the segments of a traditional graduation speech and touched on celebrating your accomplishments and your gratitude. And you probably recognize I'm moving now towards that part about your future. You are correct. I confess, though, that I have struggled with what to say here. 
not because I have nothing to say, but because I have too much to say. I've drafted remarks about attorneys' duties and responsibilities, characteristics of good attorneys, issues facing our courts and profession, the core values of our legal system, ethics lessons, and assorted other TED Talk-worthy topics. But I concluded all of those talks are for a different day. Today is about joy and celebration. So how does that fit with the portion of the talk where we look to your future? Very simply, everyone is celebrating you today, which includes law school alumni and other attorneys you haven't even known. We all hope you find immense joy in your professional life as an attorney. And we are here to support you on that quest. One of Merriam-Webster's definitions of joy explains our wish. It defines joy as the emotion evoked by well-being, success, or good fortune, or by the prospect of possessing what one desires. Think about what that means from a career perspective. Granted, professional joy walks hand in hand with personal joy. Still, as Steve Jobs famously said, your work is going to fill a large part of your life, and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. While I agree with that sentiment, there are other dimensions, some each of us must define for ourselves, and others that are more universal. One universal aspect is that you can't feel joy if your work conflicts with your values. Now, you may be sitting here today confident you found the job or another professional path that will bring you joy. You may believe that is the path you will travel throughout your career. I remember I did. I was lucky enough to come to graduation with my dream job at a firm with an outstanding reputation and a diverse practice. The senior partners had made clear that they prioritized civility, service to the bar and community, and pro bono representation for those who could not afford to hire us. All things important to me. And I knew I would love my work, and I also knew I would use my skills to improve my community, which was one of the values that had motivated me to be an attorney. Yes, I believed that pursuing those values put me on the path that would bring me joy and one that I would follow throughout my career. So much so that on my graduation day, when my brother asked if I ever wanted to be a judge, I emphatically told him, no. The reasons I was so emphatic did not change with time. Sure, there were hard days at work that when work did not go well, but every job I know has those. And there were hurdles to jump as our profession and society adjusted to having women in litigation. I was the only woman in my firm, and few women litigated civil cases. I embraced that challenge and set out to effect change. Bottom line, I loved my work, and the work allowed me to remain true to my values. After a little more than a decade, though, an opportunity came along. Attorneys, judges, and community members encouraged me to apply to be a district judge. At first, I remained steadfast in my belief I was where I belonged. But eventually, my certainty weakened, not because I grew disenchanted with the private practice of law, but because I recognized a chance for greater joy as I've mentioned, serving my community was the animating force that drove me to go to law school, and serving as a judge would allow me to do that every day. I also realized one factor holding me back was fear. 
fear of the unknown, and fear of knowing I would again be the only woman. I recognize fear should not keep me from grabbing opportunity, especially because I had a strong bridge that would bring me back to a job I loved if my risk fell. But I, so I took that risk and I made a sharp turn from the first path I took after graduation and I became a judge. I am one of the lucky ones. Each path I took was an excellent choice for me, one that brought me a sense of fulfillment and satisfaction, a feeling I was doing good work and that allowed me to stay true to my values. Opening myself to taking a chance brought even greater joy. Like me, you may find joy in your first job. If you do, wonderful. Many spend a joyous lifetime content with that first choice. But in that contentment, I urge you to remember my experience and remain open to other opportunities. Others of you may not have the same luck. In fact, I watch friends who did not enjoy the same jobs I did. Litigating isn't for everyone, nor is serving on the bench. This doesn't mean that one of us failed and the other succeeded. It just means we are different. Our differences bring into focus three important words from that definition of joy I referenced. What one desires. Simply put, what I desire, you may not. The work I love may be work you hate. Some love to be in a courtroom or actively advising clients. Others are happiest when they're sitting in front of a computer with the knowledge they can research away and never talk to a client. Some substantive areas of the law might make you ecstatic, while others dread the same subject. Fortunately, our profession has room for differences. One of the beauties of our law degrees is that we have almost unlimited options to do the work we love. Look for the work you love, the work that meshes with your value. Then take the chance and embrace the joy. I am proud to stand with you as alumni of Washburn University School of Law, class of 2023. I look forward to watching your joyful paths and where they take you. May those paths rise up to meet you. Be it known that in as much as honorary degrees are awarded to men and women who, because of scholarly contributions, meritorious public service, or other noteworthy achievements, have come into universal high regard, the Board of Regents of Washburn University does therefore confer upon Marla Lukert the degree of Doctor of Law with all the rights, privileges, and insignia pertaining thereto. In testimony whereof, this diploma is issued with the signatures of the President and Chair of the Board of Regents and the seal of the University affixed at Topeka, Kansas on this 13th day of May, 2023. Ms. Lukert, for your leadership, your support of higher education, and your dedication to helping others, Washburn University confers this honorary degree. In token thereof, we cause you to be vested with the Doctor of Law academic hood and grant you this diploma.
ready? Okay. Will the class of 2023 candidates for the Juris Doctorate degree, the Master of Laws degree, and the Master of Studies of Law degree please rise? Let me tell you what this crew has accomplished. The Juris Doctorate degree represents 90 academic credit hours beyond a bachelor's degree. The LLM degree represents 24 academic credit hours of advanced study in law. And the MSL degree represents 30 academic credit hours beyond a bachelor's degree. Dean Jackson, President Mazacek, I present to you the candidates for the Juris Doctorate degree, the Master of Laws degree, and the Master of Studies in Law degree of the class of 2023. President Mazachak, the candidates before you and in abstentia have completed all requirements for the Juris Doctor degree, the Master of Laws degree, or the Master of Studies in Law degree, and have been recommended by the Faculty of Law. I am pleased to present them to you now for the conferring of their degrees. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents of Washburn University of Topeka, Kansas, I hereby confer upon those who have completed the requirements the degree, Juris Doctor, or Master of Laws with all the honors, rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. As a symbol of your great accomplishment, please move your tassel to the left side at this time. Class of 2023 graduates, will you now please come forward to receive your diplomas. Yes. Honors announced at this ceremony for the 2023 graduates are preliminary. They make me say it. <laughs> Anuki Bakashvili. <laughs> Nena Blossom Nwafor Oritsu. Anthony Nana Odo. Just wait. Nicolasa Elaine Jackson. Marley Michelle Barnett. Walker Freeman Bassett, Dean's Honors. Adriana Janae Berry Dunn. Christian Alexander Burtz. <laughs> Jalen Landry Branson. <laughs> Elizabeth. 
Alyssa Marie Breckheisen. Adam Garrett Brewster, Dean's Honors. Devin Canfield. Blair Palmer Caps. Hilary Chasson. Radon Unique Childs. <laughs> Alyssa Marie Crenshaw, Dean's Honors. <laughs> Madison Joe Dressman. Preston Dean Duncan. Grace Elizabeth Egan. Samantha D. Arazo. Samuel Timothy Frost, Dean's Honors. <laughs> Michaela Lene Latrice Gibbs. <laughs> Benjamin Eric Ginky. Evan William Godders. <laughs> Myra Latrice Gray. Melanie Harbaugh, Dean's Honors. <laughs> Rhett Dean Harmon. <laughs> Robert Francis Harrison. Isaac Henson. <laughs> Caleb Boone Hits, Dean's Honors. Emma Rachel Hockman, Dean's Honors. <laughs> Brianna Mary Hogan. Yeah. 
Autumn Jean Hovde. Baron Jack Hoy. Garen Richard Hunt. Isaac Jensen. Bailey Ray Juarez. Jacob Michael Cuckelman. Danielle Marie Lawton. Derek Joseph Lively, Dean's Honors. Haley Allison Moss, cum laude. Lauren Michelle Martin, Dean's Honors. Marcus William Meyer, Dean's Honors. Taylor Marie Moore. Elias Jacob Mordecai. Holly Mahota Murphy, cum laude. <laughs> Marisa Alexis No, magna cum laude. <laughs> Austin Omis. Jacob Thomas Overby. Autumn Brooke Packard, magna cum laude. Jordan Michael Pitts. <laughs> Jennifer Platten. Samuel Allen Pomeroy, Dean's Honors. Kieran Kaur Pooney. Woo! 
Sage Pormirza. Michael Keith Rankin. Noel Irene Ralph, Dean's Honors. Taylor Rice. Cole Joseph Roberts. <laughs> Noah Robinson. Caleb Abel Shoemaker, Dean's Honors. <laughs> Noah Thane Scrimshire. Nathan Thomas Seltzer, Dean's Honors. Catherine Elizabeth Sittenauer. <laughs> Casey Solanus Smith. <laughs> Nicholas Cole Smith. Christian J. Smith. Woo! Nicole Smith, Dean's Honors. Woo! Emma Jean Stotts, summa cum laude. Maida Rose Stahlbalmer, cum laude. Gabrielle Adair Stein, Dean's Honors. Andrew Halstead Stewart. Ty Stewart, Dean's Honors. Kaylee Ann Stutz. Catherine Juliet Sweeney. Taylor Marie Thompson, Dean's Honors. <laughs> William Ross Van Horn. <laughs> Morgan.
Morgan Wegener. <laughs> Tina Wenzel, Dean's Honors. Andrew Patrick Wiederholt, Dean's Honors. Elizabeth May Wilder, Cum Laude. <laughs> Will the graduates please stand? We are proud to welcome our graduates as alumni to the School of Law in Washburn University. I present to you the class of 2023.